This is an ABC television network presentation. Well, Walt? Yeah? How do you feel? Like an expectant father. <laughs> Nervous, but wonderful. Synchronized watches. This kind of reminds me of something we did four years ago. Yes, sir. Now listen, pal, friend, neighbor, I'm counting on you. <laughs> we'll do our best. I'll run and pick up the grandchildren. All right, bye. See you later. Wherever you are, whatever you do, fun's more fun with a camera by Kodak. So this summer, be sure to save your good times in pictures. And now, direct from Disneyland, USA, Kodak presents... Disneyland 59. Disneyland 59, a place for people to be happy. That was the dream that put the wheels in motion a few brief years ago. Since then, it has been host to 15 million visitors, to kings and presidents, to almost one in every 10 Americans, to people of every race and creed. In 1954, Disneyland was just a painting on canvas. To transfer and expand this into reality, it took 160 acres, a site that had once been an orange grove, quiet, secluded, and unsuspecting. To build a magic kingdom in these times takes more than a magic wand. It took earth movers. Scooping out lakes, canals, and broad riverbeds paid off with enough dirt for rolling hills, knolls, and islands. Rare tropical plants for the jungles of Adventureland were sought out and brought from many parts of the world. There was a deadline to meet and no time for nature to carve out rock formations, so sculptors took over the job. Riverbeds were sealed watertight. Crafts and skills, near forgotten, were revived and put to use. Craftsmen created a Mississippi paddle wheeler, a pirate ship, a fort of hewn logs, a fairy tale castle. Down on Old Main Street, the architecture may be 19th century, but construction methods are strictly up to the minute. As the opening day of Disneyland drew near, thousands of workmen were kept on a round-the-clock schedule. Time was running out. A speed-up proclamation was issued. Men, material, and machines shifted into overdrive. The tempo was terrific. This crew could have built Rome in a day. The carpenters were on the beat. A man's got to have his lunch. Oh well, there's always the coffee break to look forward to. Only fast whistlers could whistle while they worked. After hectic weeks and Herculean labors, the deadline was kept. The dream was fulfilled. But it was a dream with a future, for Disneyland will never be completed. From the beginning, it has expanded and grown as new adventures and new ideas came into being. The Skyway was soon added as a link between Tomorrowland and Fantasyland. It was a new and exciting way to see the sights from the heights. The jungles of Adventureland thrived and grew. Wild beasts were added to increase the fast-growing animal population. A tribe of natives moved in, and they've been celebrating ever since. In Frontierland, more pages out of history and legend came to life. The Columbia took her place on the big river a full-sized replica of the famous vessel that was the first ship to carry the American flag around the world. In Tomorrowland, that ever-changing land, old things constantly make way for the new. 
The old Autopia Freeway is being expanded into a new multi-level superhighway. The first modern monorail system in America is being created here, a highway in the sky. Submarines will carry passengers through the depths of the seven seas for an adventure in liquid space. The man-made Matterhorn, with its bobsled rides and glacier skyways, is an engineering feat without parallel. Today, these new adventures are ready for their dedication. In a moment, we'll join the crowds along Main Street, USA, and meet your hosts, Walt Disney and Art Linkletter, for an on-the-spot preview of Disneyland 59. Now, let's join the Ozzie Nelson family over on Tom Sawyer's Island. Hello. We're having a wonderful time. And best of all, we'll be saving all of it to enjoy again and again. You can, too, with a brownie movie camera like this. I was just taking a picture of Dave and Ricky on Tom Sawyer's raft. Now I'll get one of Ozzie enjoying himself in his own way. That picture will be a big hit at our house. Ozzy loves this Brownie movie camera because it's so easy to use. Even I can get movies with a professional touch. I can start with an overall shot like this. Then turn it. And get a medium shot. Another twist. <laughs> and here's a close-up of tonight's dinner. Brownie movie cameras are so easy to operate and so inexpensive. Why don't you put your family in movies? That's what we do, see? Even Ozzy will enjoy every minute of our trip when we get home. Take a brownie movie camera wherever you go and save the thrill of seeing new things, visiting historic places, or watching that big swimming meet. Save all the action with a brownie movie camera. For big, clear, colorful, low-cost movies, you can get a brownie movie camera for only $32.50 or as little as 350 down. Remember, Brownie movie cameras are made by Kodak, and the surest way to better movies is to insist on that name, Kodak. How do you do, everyone? I'm Art Linkletter, standing right in the heart of Disneyland, in the main plaza at the head of Main Street. And we're just about to begin the ceremonies for this hour and a half show. And here in the main reviewing stand are friends of Walt Disney who've come from all over the country to help in these ceremonies. Vice President of the United States, Richard Nixon and his family. And from Hollywood, Hedda Hopper wearing a parasol. And uh, Edward Pernay, the Consul General of Switzerland, come to see who stole the Matterhorn. And many, many others from all over the country. You'll meet them later in the program, including the admirals who are here for part of the submarine dedication ceremonies. But right now, we're all waiting for the big parade. And looking down Main Street, I see Disneyland 59 and a huge paper drum. Breaking right through it, in just a moment, will come the parade. Fittingly, bursting through the drum is Mickey Mouse, the little fella who started it all so many years ago the fellow who formed a lifelong partnership with Walt Disney and helped to start a chain reaction of happy events. Our television cameras are going to look right down Main Street, which has been built to represent how your town might have looked at the turn of the century. The Disneyland band, directed by V.C. Walker, and man, he struts, is coming up the marchingest band in the whole world, covering every cranny of Disneyland. They play on the river boats and covered wagons and the carousel and the jungle launches. You name it, and they're there. And so they're here for the opening of our big parade. It's a beautiful day here in Disneyland. The sun is beating down, and the parade will bring to the cameras some of the most colorful characters in Hollywood. Famous people and beautiful floats. Following the Disneyland band is the color guard of the armed forces with the flags of the United States and California. And 
here, ladies and gentlemen, is Mr. Disneyland himself, Walt Disney, having a great time with his grandchildren, Chris and Joanna. There's the Pied Piper of America, Walt Disney, and he'll see the rest of the parade. <laughs> We're gonna see a dance. The reds and the purples and the golds and the brilliant colors of these dancers shining in the sun is a sight to see. And I might add that uh, from the number of cameras present, the Eastman Company is going to get its costs back just from this parade alone. You can hear the snapping shutters from one end of Main Street to the other. Now we have the parasols out. little dolls, aren't they? <laughs> With the kind of shoes they're wearing, it's a good thing that they aren't taking one of the customary American parades eight miles through the hot streets of the downtown district. parade man myself and I've staged and been at many of the big parades in the country over the past 25 years broadcasting them I'd like to tell you that the way some professional parade operators judge the success of a parade is by the number of prostrations along the line of march I've heard them say oh it was a great parade we had over 150 faintings well it's too comfortable here to faint but if the magnitude scope and color of this parade were any criteria, we'd have two or three hundred paintings. <laughs> Look at those little cuties. There they go, dressed in black and red, orange and purple and gold. Next comes the Austrian group. And these are the authentic costumes and the authentic dancers of the old world. They're wearing their lederhosen, their leather pants. About to do a version of the old Schuplattler dance called the slap leather. Characteristic Austrian flower wagon. Next comes Gold Mexico. Not far from Disneyland, less than 100 miles across the border to our neighbor to the south. Mexico brings us, of course, the gaily caparisoned riders. And uh, these riders have the beautiful silver saddles and the sequin costumes and tremendous sombreros. Now the dancers, all the little girls, the Corina Valdez dancers, who've also appeared at the Hollywood Bowl many times. And they're coming up the street with the Mexican dance. See some of the girls carrying the gourds, which is so typical. Street, you can see the horse and the buckboard with such liquid names riding them. It's Olivia Jurado, Aida Estrada, Maria Aurora Tip, Senores, Senoritas y Caballeros. 
Such a lovely language. The Gonzalez trio have gone by. Tika Martinez and Alma Kurt. And back of them are the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Mounted Posse. And back of this horse and buckboard, you can hear the first strains of a band coming up the street. Captain Ben Oberstein is leading his Sheriff's Mounted Posse. looking at two rickshaws carrying Miss Chinatown of San Francisco and Miss Chinatown of Los Angeles. Well, they say east is east and west is west and never the twain shall meet, but here at the Disneyland Parade, we've just seen a drum and bugle corps, which is typically western, and now that's followed by gong carriers, firecracker pole carriers, tiny Chinese dragons, and a tremendous dragon coming up the street now. This one is 150 years old. Think of the care that this has been given because of the countless parades that it's been in. And it's been in Chinese parades in both San Francisco and Los Angeles. A real good luck Chinese dragon. like a centipede with all those legs underneath it, doesn't it? <laughs> and who brings up the rear? Well, we never know. Now here comes our next international group, and these are the Gandhi dancers. About 20 Gandhi dancers from Greece, and the Greek musicians, which are in the cart, just in back of these Gandhi dancers, have just recently arrived from Athens in Hollywood's Greek village. Costumes are predominantly red and white, and the men wear dark blue or black, boots black, and the, and the turbans around their heads being red. So there is your color pattern for the Greek dancers. Many, many gold coins around the neck and much jewelry, almost in the gypsy style, characterize their dancing. Less than a month ago, these, these instrumentalists were in Athens, Greece, playing. Now they're here in Disneyland. Next comes Spain in their proud banner of red and gold. And Norma Gutierrez is wearing the Spanish bridal dress, preceded by a matador and followed by a cart with Spanish musicians and the Lily Aguila dancers. Tempo and pace of the parade is beginning to pick up now. We get into the fast-moving dancers with their castanets. These Lily Awilar dancers have appeared at the Hollywood Bowl and Pomona Fair in Canada and many, many times at Disneyland. They wear bright green and gold and purple and black. As you can see, they're very young, all of them under, I'd say, under 14. Here come some of the older senoritas, some of them being as old as maybe 16 or 17. And back of them come Spanish masks, 10-foot-high Spanish masks called the Gigantes. These date back to 1276, over 600 years ago, representing the four parts of the world known at that time. And then, of course, colorful Spanish equestrians, Bob Phillips and Hazel Kirkpatrick riding these beautifully silvered horses. Those saddles must cost from $25,000 to $50,000 each. Solid silver mountings. <laughs> now come the Scottish dancers in their bagpipes and gilts and their beautiful mantles. 
of the San Diego Highland Dancers, the Campbell Highlanders Bagpipe Band, and the Cameron Highlanders Bagpipe Band, all from San Diego, incidentally. I've had these dancers on my own house party program, and they're a delightful little group of highly trained, authentic Scotch dancers. Just starting. Some of the fabulous Disneyland floats, and some of the stars from Hollywood are all waiting back in line, coming up a little bit later. You know, I'm having the time of my life. Julia, are you having any fun? Oh, yes, Art, I am. And I've been taking pictures everywhere. I hope you're going to take plenty of pictures this summer, too. On your vacation, on holiday weekends, wherever you go, I know you'll find plenty of pictures that you'll want to take. <laughs> Summer is made of pictures waiting to be taken. Every hour of every day, there's a picture somewhere near you waiting for your camera. Summer's a voice that cries, let's go. Summer's a new adventure. Summer is sun and fun and pictures waiting for your camera. Summer is a time for looking ahead, for dreams of worlds to conquer. Summer is made of a father's pride, a mother's love, and a youngster's grin. Summer is made of pictures waiting for your camera. Summer's a time when old friends meet for rest and recollection. Good times, gay times, warmth and friendship. All of these and many more are ready for your camera. For summer is made of pictures waiting to be taken. Wherever you go, whatever you do in the perfect days ahead, take along your Kodak camera and lots of dependable Kodak film. Whether you take snapshots, color slides, or movies, in sun or shade, you can count on Kodak film for sharp, clear pictures time after time. I'm sure you'll want to take lots of pictures this summer, and that's just what I'm going to do right now because I see the parade is about to begin and I don't want to miss a minute of it. Gentlemen, behind them comes the Lassie cast. John Provost and June Lockhart and Hugh Riley and Lassie in horse-drawn fire wagons. And J. Carroll Nash as Charlie Chan and Zazu Pitts. And uh, Roy Roberts of O Susanna. Paul Maxey of People's Choice. He's the mayor in that TV show. Uh, Edgar Bergen and his wife, Francis. Bob Cummings. Eddie Albert, Mary Cummings, and now coming up with a horse car ballet. A gay 90s dance with a gay beat, and in these old-fashioned horse-drawn streetcars, Grandma could window shop while sitting down. Doesn't look like they're gonna do much sitting today. Let's see the dancers there on each side of this fan, of this each side of this horse-drawn cart. the Elliott Brothers Band on the omnibus, while the horse car ballet takes place on each side. These are the 
Disneyland Date Nighters. They provide the beat for teenagers and all ages at Disneyland's summer night dancing parties. Every night there's dancing here. Disneyland's Main Street is a composite of all the main streets in America way back in the late 90s and early 1900s. And there they board their horse car. Everybody gives a bow. And here they go again. There go the Elliott Brothers Band, who really blew up a storm on that one. That takes care of Main Street, and let's get to Adventureland, because each realm in Disneyland is represented to salute the new additions to the park. And as you can see, we're on safari, and Wally Bogue is the white hunter on the elephant. Incidentally, Wally is the famous entertainer of the Golden Horseshoe Show, but today he's turned in his 10-gallon cowboy hat for a safari hat. Here come the natives, the jungle warriors, witch doctors, head shrinkers, and a real gorilla man, and chimps, live chimps, these are, led by Sheena, who is Irish McCullough on television. The jungle warriors behind them are carrying a dead lion on a pole. Get a load of that. Now comes the next float, Adventureland, Tarzan, Jane. This represents the Adventureland ride, where the riverboats go up the rivers of all the continents and all the jungles, and they're fighting pythons. That takes us through Adventureland and brings us to Frontierland. The Huntington Park Youth Band of 90 pieces is going by in their bright blue and gold uniforms. the band having serenaded Vice President Nixon and Walt Disney and his guests of honor go on by, followed by a stagecoach with Richard Eastham of Tombstone Territory riding shotgun. Behind him, the silver-mounted equestrians. Look at those saddle mountings. Ernest Specht riding King Cortez Jr. and L.D. Wardle riding a Palomino parade horse. Many, many other riders wearing uh, costumes that run up to 40, 50, 60, 70 thousand dollars in solid silver plating. These are beautiful Arabians, quarter horse palominos, Bay Arabian horses, and that's George Putnam up there, one of our top TV newscasters, who is a gaily caparisoned rider, and many of our better known citizens here in Southern California dressed in their fiesta costumes. That's a beautiful, beautiful display. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon dressed in his bright red Royal Mounted Police uniform. Now we see a Columbia float. Columbia was the first American ship to circumnavigate the globe in 1787. And an exact replica of this famous schooner carries passengers on Frontier's Land's Big River. And this is a little model of it, about 12, 14 feet long. No Frontier Land would be complete without Indians, all real Indians, member of the Drum and Feather Club. Members of 16 different Indian tribes are here every day in Disneyland. And now the Golden Horseshoe Float. A dance hall fight takes place there, and it's taking place right now with the tough guys breaking bottles and furniture over each other's heads, the can-can girls. And 
they're all killed. All but the good man, of course. He outdrew them all. Now comes Alfago Baca, who is Robert Loggia and John Slaughter and other Western heroes. The lawman, John Russell. Frontier Doctor, Rex Allen, Rawhide, Clint Eastwood, Zorro. And the kids are screaming their heads off. Fury, Bernardo, Oxcart, Sergeant Garcia. All the riders that you see on television are coming by now, the famous heroes of the West. And Zara with his black cape and his sword. There's Sergeant Garcia, the man he always foils. That's Lawrence Welk, the Lennon sisters, Jill Wells, Marvin Miller, you see him in The Millionaire, Tommy Kirk of The Shaggy Dog, Richard McKenna of The Real McCoys, Jeffrey Hunter going by, Darvin McGavin of Mike Hammer, Dennis Hopper there going through, and now the monorail floats. This represents the rapid transit system of the future. It takes its first official run in Tomorrowland today. In fact, Vice President Richard Nixon and his family will participate in the dedication ceremony of this skyway of the future. This float represents the monorail system it goes all over the new section of Disneyland. There it goes. An actual working model going through tunnels, climbing on its way up to the top of this beautiful float. Following that is the Matterhorn group of Swiss chorus, yodelers, flag throwers, and others who will take part in the actual dedication of the Matterhorn in a few minutes. Among them are the mountain climbers, now we have a submarine float coming up. Oh, before that, however, is the Matterhorn float with the uh, bobsled coming down the steep slope. They're wearing red costumes, and they look like they're all daredevils, and actually there's a tremendous bobsled ride built into the Matterhorn, 14-story high. Look at that kid enjoying the fun. San Diego Naval Training Center Band. And now, following the San Diego Naval Training Center Band is the submarine voyage with two men clad in deep sea diving helmets carrying the banner and the King Neptune riding the float with the submarine over his head. Mermaids are tossing jewelry from Davy Jones' locker to the crowd. This is another addition to Disneyland. Eight submarines carrying passengers to ocean depths. And you'll see it all dedicated in the underwater ballet in a few minutes. Now from Fantasyland, the most popular section of all for the little ones, from Mounted Knights, carrying the banner, Robin Hood and his band, sponsored by the International Order of Foresters. gymnasts, and Disney cartoon characters from Walt Disney's cartoon family. Screen stars in their own right, Mickey Mouse, Alice in Wonderland, The Three Bears, Pinocchio, Ferdinand the Bull, Mr. Toad's Car, 
the whole gang, Dumbo, the crocodile, the kangaroo, and musketeers of all sizes, and horseketeers. Here come the Arabians. down there. Uh, Meredith Wilson, would you come up here a minute? I want to hear from an expert. You're Mr. Music Man. What do you see coming up the street? What is that? Land. Oh, no. I can hear some trumpets, yeah, there's trumpets in the front row. You know, it's a great pleasure to have Eastman Kodak Company with us tonight because pictures and Disneyland just naturally go together. Since Disneyland first opened in 1955, there have been more than 15 million visitors. And all you have to do is look around you to see that practically all of them are taking pictures of their many adventures here. And they enjoy their visit a great deal more because they do. 
You know, most everyone uses this Disneyland camera store as headquarters for Kodak film and cameras. And today, when they come in, they discover that taking pictures is easier and more fun than it ever was, thanks to Kodak's brand new automatic cameras that have just been introduced. You can see them now at your own Kodak dealers. These great new cameras that give you the right exposure time after time automatically. That's right, automatically. You can go all over Disneyland or all over the world and be sure of getting beautifully exposed pictures time after time. Now, believe it or not, this picture was taken in the shade and this one in the sun. And they're both just great. Now, isn't that a wonderful thing to know? That every picture you take can come out just right and you never have to make a single setting. So this summer, save your fun the modern way with a new automatic camera by Kodak. There's one for every kind of picture taking. For snapshots, there's the new Brownie Starmatic camera. And for beautiful color movies, the new Brownie Automatic Movie Camera. So remember, wherever you are, whatever you do, fun's more fun with a camera by Kodak. Now don't go away because in just a few seconds we'll be back with some of the most exciting adventures you've ever seen. An undersea ride in the newest submarine, and a look at the transportation of the future, the monorail, and a trip to the Matterhorn Mountain, all right here on Kodak presents Disneyland 59. Ozzy's surprise party for Harriet Nelson mushrooms into a surprise for him. Watch the fun Wednesday night over the ABC television network. Now it's time for some brand new adventures in Disneyland. And the first of these will be the launching of Walt Disney's new submarine fleet, which incidentally is the eighth largest sub fleet in the world. But there's a story behind that as there is with most of the things that Walt does. So, let's see how it started. In 1868, Jules Verne conceived an undersea craft powered by a substance beyond the wildest dreams of science, an atomic submarine called the Nautilus. The thought that men might explore the underwater world came to him long before this fact was to be accomplished. In light of recent achievements, we realize the prophetic vision of this most imaginative of all writers. For what was then looked upon as fantastic fiction, it is now true fact. The world's first atomic submarine, the namesake of Jules Verne's Nautilus, was launched by the United States Navy a century after he wrote 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Its most noteworthy achievement in the interests of science took place when the USS Nautilus cruised 2,000 miles under a canopy of ice to the North Pole. With the development of the atomic submarine, the vast unexplored ocean depths present a new exciting frontier. Now it's time for the dedication of the Disneyland submarine fleet, and here's Walt Disney. I'd like to introduce our honored guest, Admiral Charles C. Kirkpatrick of the United States Navy. Thank you, Walt. I'm delighted to be here for this happy occasion. Well, Admiral, as this seems to be uh, an, uh, a nautical affair, I think it'd be appropriate if you take over, sir. I'd be most happy to do so, Walt. As a matter of fact, the Navy has been interested in some time in the proceedings that go here today, and we have considerable rooting interest in Disneyland's peacetime submarine fleet. Since the launching of the first nuclear-powered submarine, the Nautilus, the Navy also has been interested in a new concept. We call it the exploration of, limp, of liquid space. Then, too, we believe that the underseas of the world have great potential for peace and for the benefit of all mankind. But even more important than these particular resources under the seas could be the exploration, which perhaps can be accomplished by submarines. But even more important than the submarines themselves are the men. Over a century ago, Jules Verne wrote, out of the minds of men can come things that other men can do. I'd like to produce for you today one of these men, a man who does what other men can imagine. Chief Machinist Mate Stuart Nelson of the nuclear-powered submarine USS Nautilus, officially commended for outstanding leadership, technical competence, 
and devotion to duty in the first transpolar cruise in history under the sea by submarine. Chief Nelson. Well, thank you very much, Admiral. I'd, I'd like you to, to introduce my family to you, sir. Good to meet you. Nelson family. Hello, Miss Nelson. How, How are you, you? Mrs. Nelson? Good, Good to see you. Yeah. Hello, boy. Hi. How are you? Fine. Walt, this is a real Navy family. I don't believe that you could put the christening of a ship in better hands or in better company. Right there you are, are, Admiral. And Mrs. Nelson, will you honor us by christening the first submarine? Submarine. Thank you, Mr. Disney. I'll lead the way. has been loaded and is now going out for its maiden voyage after the official dedication. And now let's see what our Hallamore underwater camera is picking up below the surface.
Wasn't that something? And how about that submarine ride? I tell you, there'll be lots of youngsters whose dreams come true on that one. And you know, that's the way it is all summer long. We parents can actually see our youngsters' vacation dreams come true. There's just one thing to remember, and it's true wherever you take your children. If you want to make the most of your good times together, don't forget your camera. Because when you see your youngsters' dreams come true, you'll never forgive yourself if you don't take lots of pictures. Childhood is so short. I often think our children don't really belong to us. We just sort of borrow them for a while. Golly, it seems like only yesterday my own kids were about the size of these two. But you can make the childhood last for years to come if you take plenty of pictures. And you know it's so easy to do? Just get yourself a brownie star camera. You'll see what I mean. Why this Starmatic model actually adjusts its own lens automatically. You can shoot a picture in deep shade and then turn right around and take another in bright sunlight and get just the right exposure time after time automatically. That's wonderful, isn't it? Now, I'd suggest you see all the Brownie Star cameras at your Kodak dealers this week. They cost as little as $5.95, and any one of them would make a wonderful gift. Now, remember, Brownie Star cameras, another good reason to insist on the name Kodak. And now for the ride that I nominate as the most unusual and completely fascinating that I've ever enjoyed. Let's set a course for deeper water and continue our Disneyland submarine adventure. Dive, dive. <coughs> Pressure in boat. Straight forward, sir. Very well. Among these coral reefs, you may see some of the strange inhabitants of this undersea world hiding among the seaweed and weird rock formations. Other creatures are lurking in the depths of mysterious caves, favorite hiding places for octopus, lobster, and moray eels. With the use of our exterior sonar hydrophones, we can actually hear the fish talk. operations ahead, sir. Divers to port and starboard. Very well. Take her down to 350 feet. Use 10 degree down angle. Flood negative. The graveyard of lost ships. all the treasure that must lie in those ancient halls. Satellite sub-crossing bow, sir. Proceed with caution. Steer clear of mothership. Sir, sonar shows polar ice cap dead ahead. Very well. Continue on course to Paul. Scraping iceberg, sir. Take her deep. Take her deep. Flood negative. Flood negative. Aye, aye. Uh-oh, a giant squid. Giant squid have often been mistaken for sea serpents. Such reports have persisted for centuries, but of course they have no basis in fact. Tall tales of ocean monsters should be classed as fiction, along with the myth of mermaids, a pure flight of fancy belonging to the realm of make-believe. view into the distant past, the fabulous lost continent of Atlantis.
The treasures and grandeur of this ancient civilization are believed to have been submerged centuries ago by the eruption of a gigantic volcano. All ahead, full. Aye, aye, sir. All ahead, full. Helmsman, steer clear of those tottering columns. Aye, aye, sir. Serpent. Captain to crew, man your battle stations. Stand by for action. Fair to surface. Standing by to surface, sir. <laughs> How about that? Wasn't that everything I promised you? Well, now from the undersea lost continent of Atlantis to the freeways of Southern California is a long jump. But we can do it with Disney magic as Walt provides a rare glimpse into the shape of things to come. Now you're about to see the debut of a revolutionary new form of transportation, the monorail. But first, let's find out what's causing this revolution. We are the most mobile nation in the world over a highway system which is the most modern in existence. But cars can be built faster than the highways to take care of them. Wheels are rolling in all directions and they're all headed for the biggest traffic jam since the wheel was invented. commuter go from here. Let's take a look ahead and see what the commuter can hope for in the future. Traffic engineers agree that a monorail system could well be an answer to growing traffic congestion. In large cities where land is at a premium, an aerial monorail system needs only a narrow beamway supported by pylons. The accent is on economy. With the advent of such highways in the sky, the weary commuter will find himself traveling in speed, comfort, and safety. Tomorrow's living areas will expand as the beamways of modern monorail systems begin to crisscross metropolitan centers. But when is tomorrow? In Disneyland, a monorail system is being put into operation and the future in transportation can be enjoyed today. And here comes the Disneyland Alweg monorail coach for its first official run. Pulling up to the loading platform where the dedication ceremonies will take place and the ribbon across the track will be officially clipped. Everyone here on the loading platform, dignitaries, celebrities, and special guests are cheering as the monorail pulls in. And now, there is Vice President Nixon waiting. This is your spot, Walt. Take it away. To uh, open the first operative monorail system in America, it is our good fortune to have our friend and fellow Californian, the Vice President of the United States, Mr. Richard Nixon, and his charming family, Mrs. Pat Nixon, Julia, and Patricia, his daughters. Mr. Nixon? Our Vice President. Well, thank you very much, Walt. I want to say that uh, this has really been one of the most exciting and interesting days that I've ever had 
in my life. And I'm sure that's true of all the others who are here at Disneyland to participate in these various ceremonies opening these wonderful new uh, exhibits which we have here. Uh, I think you'll be interested to know, and I know that our television and radio listeners will be interested to know, that when uh, my wife and I were planning this trip and talking it over with our two daughters, we asked them what they wanted to do most when they came to California. And they said, we want to see our grandmother and go to Disneyland. <laughs> now, I can tell you, however, that that is not only the case with regard to young people all over the country, but it's true of the dignitaries who come to Washington from other lands. I remember President Sukarno also wanted to come to Disneyland and has been here, as you know. The King of Belgium, the King of Morocco, from all over the world, people, whether they're adults or children, want to come to Disneyland to see America, the past, the present, and the future. And so, consequently, I just want to take this opportunity to say what a fine job we think Disneyland has been doing in letting all of us for a brief few hours have an interlude in our rather busy lives and to participate in a feeling about the traditions, the dreams, the hopes of this great country of ours. Now, of course, comes the time for the dedication. And although you and I, the adults up here, are probably just as interested in writing in this as the children, since this first monorail system is a system for the future, and since, of course, Disneyland is a place which children love above everybody else, I think it would be nice if our two daughters, Patricia and Julie, would cut this ribbon. And if they would like to do that, we'll step back and let them do the job. Get right over here, children, and we'll have the scissors. Pat, won't you come up here and join with this? Your children. Now, you know how to cut a ribbon, don't you? Huh? Go right up there. And let her go. is moving now into place for loading for the first official ride and there comes Bob Cummings and Mary Cummings and their family of three or four or maybe all five of them are out here today. I see back there with a the straw skimmer Fred McMurray, uh, June Haver and their families, uh, Mrs. Linkletter and my brood of little links are all climbing in for their first ride. There's my big son Robert. My little girl, Diane, and a great many others. There they go, there's the nose, the, the tail end of the coach. It rolls on inflated rubber tires on this highway in the sky. The whole thing is controlled by the most modern electronic signal system. And it rides around over the Autopia, and then across its own track, and over the actual lagoon, where the submarines are going in and out, or are preparing to. Isn't that a beautiful overhead shot? There it is, the first monorail in America. High over Tomorrowland. Cruising over the motorboat ride over some more of the autopias filled with youngsters riding their miniature cars. That's the monorail, a long step forward into the future. Today, you're seeing America's first scheduled monorail system in operation. Soon, others will follow, heralding the day when such rapid transit systems will relieve America's crowded streets 
and perhaps even bring back the original meaning to the word freeway. Eastman Cordell, champion of stay fresh fibers. And now here in Slip 1, the Eastman Codell special, the Triton, featuring Codell, new champion of Stay Fresh Fibers, in a preview of golf jackets that stay looking smoother, slacks that keep their crease longer, rainwear that keeps its good looks, suits that fight wrinkles better, shirts that wash and wear easier, and easy to care for women's fashions. And now, Miss Julia Mead. Hi. You know, Codel is different from other fibers because Codel is the liveliest polyester fiber. It's so lively, it fights off wrinkles better and keeps clothes looking fresher and crisper. Now, for instance, let's compare a suit made with ordinary fibers to one made with Codel fibers. Here's the ordinary suit being crushed. This microscopic view shows that ordinary fibers don't fight back and the wrinkles stay in. But Codel acts like thousands of tiny muscles to smooth and flatten the fabric. The wrinkles don't have a chance. That's why clothes made with Codel look fresher and stay fresher longer. Arriving soon in stores all over America from Alligator, Arrow, Esquire Sportswear, Manhattan, McGregor, Michael Stern, Timely Clothes, Varsity Town, Palm Beach, Weldon. Clothes made with Codel. Eastman Codel. Champion of Stay Fresh Fibers. Whenever Walt Disney goes anywhere in the world, he likes to bring back something for the park. And so when Walt was on location last year in Switzerland and saw the Matterhorn, he thought, say, that would make a nice souvenir for Disneyland. Well, there it is. Not the real mountain, of course, because even Walt couldn't bring the Matterhorn back, but he built one exactly to scale. One one hundredth, the original size, 14 stories high just like the real one, and up there on the mountain now are members of the Sierra Club actually making the first ascent. So we've invited a member. Harvey, would you come over here, please? Certainly are. Harvey here has, uh, Harvey, um, what's your last name? Hickman. Harvey Hickman has been one of the top climbers in California, and along with his fellow Sierra Club members, is going to tell us on this broadcast what's going on. Now, this mountain is the exact replica of the Matterhorn, and right about now, they'd be at what height if they were in the real Matterhorn? They would be a little over 14,000 feet, probably with about 500 feet to go. Here, here, they're 14 stories high, which is plenty scary. And now, who's that going up the overhang? I believe that is George Haar, one of the veteran climbers in the Sierra Club, and a man who climbed the Matterhorn about five years ago from the Swiss side. Looks like real snow. And by the way, those trees are real up and down the slopes of this small Matterhorn. They were grown up in the Rocky Mountains and brought down here and transplanted. What's he doing right now? Again, that is sixth class climbing. He's stepping in slings to make this exceedingly difficult overhang. This is probably the hardest type of climbing there is, and it really takes experts to make it. Those slings he steps in are strong nylon slings. You say sixth class? What does that mean? That means he has to use direct aid to make the pitch. Fifth class is where they just use pitons and carabiners for safety. Oh, look at him. Oh, hang on. But he made it. A splendid climber. <laughs> for a minute there, I didn't think. Oh, yes. I he, had, a... he had a good belay on him. Even if he had fallen, the rope would have caught him. And now there they are up at the top, and they're raising the Swiss flag and the United States flag. And in a moment, they'll come down in what spectacular fashion? They're going to rappel down. And rappelling is a rather expert way of sliding down the rope using the friction over your shoulders and your back to control the speed of the descent and using a hand also, one hand, to guide, your, guide you down the mountain. 
you'll see the rope being thrown over, the rappel rope being thrown over in just a moment. There it is. That comes down about how far? Most rappel ropes are about 150 feet long. And now they're going to come sliding down the mountain with great leaps and jumps, with uh, almost like a free fall. Almost, but completely controlled and completely safe when it's in the hands of experts. And that's what these people are. Well, now we're about to see the most thrilling and exciting spectacle of all. Mountain climbers coming down just as they do up in the mountains. This is Chuck Wiltz, one of the most famous climbers who's made a number of first ascents, getting ready to rappel down. He's putting the rope through a carabiner. Then we'll see the rope come over his shoulder right now. And you'll see him guide his way down, just holding on with one hand. Perfectly safe, but it takes skill. He is loosening the rope right now so that it won't get caught in any pinnacles or caught in any cracks as he descends. All right, here he comes. And right over the edge he'll go now. There we go. <laughs> it's exhilarating to do that, but it takes an expert. Kangaroos in reverse, yeah. coming down the Matterhorn. Mike Sherrick coming down the, well, he's closer to the Fjorgen Ridge. Left. The rope runs through that. He's perhaps uh, certainly one of the two or three most famous young climbers in the Sierra Club. Well, the crowd here is getting a great thrill out of watching this.
Clark. <laughs> Translated roughly into English, that means crazy man, crazy. And why not? Disneyland is full of music and adventure and plain and fancy fun. Just the kind of a place that would appeal to a kid, like um, Ed Sullivan. Disneyland is really a world all its own. A wonderful place to have fun and a wonderful place to take pictures. But so is the place where you plan to spend your vacation this summer. Wherever it may be, plan to save all the enjoyment. Relive your entire summer in big, clear, colorful movies. And it's easier than ever with this new Brownie automatic movie camera. It gives you correctly exposed pictures every time automatically. For instance, as we move along this jungle river in Disneyland, the light changes every inch of the way. But you get each new scene correctly exposed with a Brownie automatic because it has an electric eye that changes your lens setting for you. So, whether you're in bright sunlight or in deep shade, or whatever your light, you get the correct exposure. Even if the light changes while you're actually shooting. And what's more, you're always ready with a Brownie automatic when the unexpected happens. Look. Now, because this Brownie camera is automatic, I was able to get those three terrific shots that fast. The hippo in the sun, the guide in the deep shade, and then back to Mr. Hippo. The Brownie automatic movie camera is yours for $74.50, or as little as $7.50 down. Other Brownie movie cameras start as low as $32.50. Why not start this summer to save all your good times with a movie camera by Kodak? And remember, wherever you are and whatever you do, fun's more fun when you save it in movies. My happy job as co-host is just about wrapped up. So I'm gonna have some fun on these rides we've been talking about. Where's Walt? Oh, there he is down there with some children, naturally. So for one last official bit of business, I give you the happiest kid in the park, <laughs> Walt Disney. Disneyland was made possible by all of you. The millions have already been here, the people here today, and those we hope to see someday. So I think it's appropriate for the occasion that I ask these children from the visitors here today to help me officially open Disneyland 59 for its only purpose, the pursuit of happiness for all. Come on, children, help me with this. You want to go? <laughs> Here we go, come on.
Kodak Presents Disneyland 59 has come to you direct from Disneyland USA. Remember, for your vacation, your weekends, for the holidays coming up, wherever you are, whatever you do, fun's more fun with a camera by Kodak. This summer, be sure to save your good times on dependable Kodak film. We wish to thank the Ralston Purina Company, sponsors of Bold Journey, for relinquishing their time this evening in order that we might bring you the special Disneyland 59 program. Bold Journey will return next week over most of these stations. This has been an ABC Television Network presentation. <laughs>